Depictions of the underworld can be found across all points of recorded human history. From the Mesopotamian Kur, a desolate cavern beneath the earth where souls were believed to wander endlessly, to the Buddhist Naraka, polar worlds where souls are believed to be reborn and tortured, it is evident that the concept of an afterlife, particularly one intended to punish individuals for their life choices, has been an important part of human culture. But why? By taking a look at three different representations of the underworld from ancient to medieval history, we can possibly find the answer. The first piece I'll be talking about today is titled Book of the Dead for the Chantress of Amun Nani. This papyrus scroll was created circa 1050 BCE in ancient Egypt. It falls under the ancient era of art history and carries the hallmarks of ancient Egyptian craftsmanship with its stylized figures, profiled stances, emphasized patterns, and weighted lines. The artist depicts the deceased, a chantress named Nani, in the Hall of Judgment. She stands before Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld, which the Egyptians called Duat, in a grandiose scale. The scale is weighing her heart against one of Maud's feathers, the Egyptian goddess of truth, an abstractive representation of cosmic order. Anubis, god of the dead, observes the equally balanced scales and tells Osiris her heart is an accurate witness, to which Osiris responds, give her her eyes and her mouth since her heart is an accurate witness. Nani is portrayed holding her eyes and mouth in hand. Above the scene, three separate slides show Nani worshipping a holy palette, venerating a statue of Horus, and observing her own tomb. Though the artist is unknown, we do know that this papyrus is made for an Egyptian woman named Nani. She was a chantress of the god Amun-Ra, the chief deity of ancient Egypt's Middle and New Kingdom. This document was involved in her funerary process. The ancient Egyptians believed in the life after death, and so did earlier cultures, as proven by the discovery of objects and trinkets included in ancient burials. During the Middle Kingdom, the same period of time in which the pharaoh Amun was fused with the sun god Ra and deified as Amun-Ra, the cult of the god Osiris, god of the underworld, was firmly established, and a more elaborate vision of the realm of death emerged, which included the vast underworld known as Duat. Duat in ancient Egyptian culture only refers to the realm of the dead, not a particular place where souls are sent to be punished, like the Christian hell. Though there might not be a realm of punishment, ancient Egyptian theology still believed in a type of final judgment. Among the many regions of Duat, souls of the deceased journeyed through the Hall of Judgment, where their souls are thought to be weighed against the scales of justice. If their soul tipped the scales and balanced heavier than one of Mont's feathers, Osiris would deny the individual passage to Aru, the field of reeds, a kind of heaven or nirvana, and their soul would be devoured by Amit, eater of hearts, an ancient Egyptian goddess and demoness. The next piece we'll be taking a look at is a classical Roman relief of Pluto and Persephone. This bas relief sculpture was carved and created during the Imperial Roman period, sometime between the years 27 BCE to 476 CE. The artist is unknown, though the artwork is distinctly early Roman. It features similarities uh, to ancient Egyptian and Etruscan artwork in its enhanced pattern detailing and sideways facing figures, though it builds upon these features in uniquely Roman ways by adding a greater sense of depth and naturalism. Complexions and overall realism are enhanced, and we start to see a transition from the abstractive stylizations of ancient Egypt to the lifelike emulation of Roman naturalism. This bas relief depicts Persephone and Pluto as they sit enthroned in the other world. Pluto is holding a patera, or a metal libation cup, in one hand, and a front of asphodel in the other. The fields of asphodel were allegedly a region of the Greco-Roman underworld that worked like a kind of purgatory. Unremarkable, ordinary souls, the majority of people, were believed to end up here when they died. Alongside him, Persephone carries a hen in wheat. Symbolically, wheat is representative of the goddess, and exists here in this artwork to help the viewer identify her. A rooster is strutting beneath their throne. Chickens were considered sacred in Greco-Roman cultures as they were a rare luxury animal. They were not eaten or sacrificed, instead, they were used as oracles, harbingers of good fortune, and symbols of power. Ancient Roman and Greek mythology had essentially congruent beliefs. The only real difference is in the names used. For example, Pluto is just the Roman counterpart to the Greek Hades. In Greek mythology, Hades is believed to be the god of the underworld, synonymously referred to as Hades. In his article, Greek Ideas of the Hereafter in Virgil's Roman Epic, author Friedrich Salmson describes Hades as a dark and depressing world. The dead are ghost-like replicas of their former selves without flesh and bone, and on the whole it seems without consciousness, so that Odysseus, to converse with them, must give them a drink of blood, the stuff of life. Hades consisted of three regions, the Elysian Field, an idealized realm like heaven, the fields of Asphodel, and Tartarus, a pit that was said to crack down past the center of the earth, where the wicked were cast to be tortured without end. The final piece of art we'll be examining today is a polyptic tempera and oak painting from the Middle Ages and the medieval era of our history. It's called The Last Judgment, or Weltgericht in German. The Last Judgment was painted circa 1435 by Stefan Lochner, a Gothic artist known for his dexterity in color work and heavy flowing lines. His style would later influence Nuremberg Renaissance painter Albert Dürer. There's little re remaining recorded evidence of Stefan Lochner. In fact, without Dürer and other artists accrediting inspiration to him, it is likely Lochner would still be unidentified. 
Before his identity was rediscovered by art historians, several of his works were attributed to the not named the Dombild Master after his work on the Dombild Altarpiece. The Last Judgment is a doom painting, a medieval term that simply describes a representation of the Last Judgment from the Bible, typically in a medieval church. During the English Reformation, most doom paintings were actually destroyed by the English government when the Church of England separated themselves from the Roman Catholic Church in, in favor of Anglicanism. Lochner's Last Judgment contains 13 panels, each impressively detailed with their own biblical scene. For the sake of this video, we will be discussing the main central panel. The focal panel of this doom painting features Jesus. He watches over the scene from the heavens, aloft on a double rainbow. Symbolically, Jesus was often depicted on a rainbow in doom paintings and medieval artwork to help identify him. By placing him enthroned on the highest center point of the image, Lochner paints what is referred to in medieval art as Christ in majesty. On his right, St. John kneels in prayer. According to Gardner's Art Through the Ages, A Global History, John was an apostle and was the author of the Apocalypse, the last book of the New Testament, which he wrote in exile on the Greek island Patmos. The Apocalypse records John's visions of the end of the world, the last judgment, and the second coming. To Jesus' left, Mary clasps her hands in prayer, while the angels above her tote the Arma Christi, or instruments of the Passion, tools used by Christ to conquer Satan. Lochner emphasizes the holy figures with their brilliantly colored robes and their large scale. Beneath them, on the lower part of the panel, the saved are portrayed on Jesus' left, while the doomed are shown on the right, with demons in the chaos of hell, the Christian underworld. Christianity shares similar eschatological views with the ancient Egyptians and Imperial Romans. Like Osiris and Hades, Christians believe their soul will be judged by Christ, or God, at the end of their life. Those whose souls are condemned are cast away to hell, where they are punished and tortured by Satan, the devil, a fallen angel named Lucifer, who is believed to be the king of hell. As we can see, eschatology, the theory of final judgment and a karmic retribution, has had a significant role throughout all of human history. The existence of a human soul, a spiritual embodiment of the self, and an afterlife seems to be a common belief across most, if not all, cultures. So, what does this indicate about humanity as a whole, the cultures that produce these kinds of art? Well, to a non-believer, this may reflect the human struggle of mortality. Eschatology might function as a way of relieving and comforting ourselves from distressing realities like death and the limited lifespan. By entertaining the idea of an achievable, idealized afterlife, one can dull the mental anguish of death, a natural process that we are instinctually born to fear. To the believer, the existence of artworks like these point to a consistent spiritual world. By exploring different cultures and their depictions of the underworld across time, we open our minds to new possibilities about the meaning and consequence of death. The similarities that carry across these cultures' interpretations of the afterlife is undeniable, and so it's not entirely unlikely to assume that we just haven't stumbled upon the correct technology to record or measure spiritual experience. In either case, these underworldly portrayals are testament to the human need for permanence. In a lifetime that is so limited and prone to change, these artists make it clear that there is a human drive to exist. At its root, imagery and symbolism of the afterlife call to the intrinsic human will of survival.